stuff. Uh, can somebody tweet? I will. I'm already logged in on Twitch's grill, so I can just. Fantastic. Set this live. Mm -hmm. um, Do the uh, button click. Thing. That is a start to everything I want in my life right now. Um, that should be there. We should be live. I think I'm seeing us. Yes, yes, yes. Good, good, good. Okie doke. Um, let me get my show notes in front of me. It says upcoming movies. Did not change the stream thing. Uh, um, one, two, seven. Did you update it? No. Are you updating it now? I, I'm, I'm fixing the tweet first. Oh, gotcha. And if you updated I'll... it, it should be coming through. Why I not? didn't. But your Streamlabs should have anyway. But I'll change it in the dashboard. Oh, yeah. No, it has to change in the dashboard. I don't use Streamlabs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Seven... I don't want to use uh, the Streamlabs. I don't know why that makes me Oh, and I think I just typed Captain America. Captain yes. America lady. <laughs> We're going to talk about yeah, Captain, Captain America, America woman. A little fucking late. <sighs> okay. Um, oh, and then also. Okay, I'll fix it in the. I'm going to be crinkly for a second. I apologize. I'm going to be crinkly for more than a second. Think about this because I wasn't producing. Uh, I'm sorry. That's right. It's raining yeah. today. It's been chaos. My life is always chaos. Mm. Let's be honest. Let's just let's just be real about it, kids. Well, my lighting is a little weird today. I my I guess my husband, I don't know who else would have taken it, took my lamp. <laughs> look at my shiny cup. Oh, so shiny and pretty. And then look at my shiny popcorn. <laughs> Look at it, it's so pretty. It's a pretty shiny popcorn tin. Okay, sorry, I'm done. Mm. I'm so excited. I was I was like, yeah, I don't want any popcorn. I'm I'm full. Just give me I just want the tin. Cuz it was like <laughs> a deal and I got 20% off on it and it was $25 normally. So I paid $20 and I got a shirt and I got a cup and I got a popcorn tin. So I was like, that is really worth it, I think. <laughs> um I feel bad that I have to describe her as my third favorite female comic book character. <laughs> it's like, technically, she's my third favorite female comic book, because standalone comic book character, but um, I enjoy her very much. Oh, I forgot there was something I wanted to talk about. Uh, la, 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 la. Okay. Do you do uh, the did uh, I can't? Why can't I? <laughs> do you um happen to remember because unfortunately I, I am terrible with names do you happen to remember what the little girl's name was yes what was her name and by yes I mean I can go to IMDB and locate it <laughs> <laughs> oh god it was I was Lieutenant trying to... Trouble yeah I was going to say <laughs> other than Lieutenant <laughs> Trouble I, I can't think of Lieutenant her name Trouble. I don't remember what her actual name was <laughs> yeah that's all I keep thinking is uh, Lieutenant Trouble Monica Maybe? Monica, that's right. Monica the Rambo. Yep. The little girl was yep. Monica? Yep, because the mom yep. was Maria. Okay. That makes sense. And what the oh, funny thing oh, is... she's a hero later, isn't she? And what's interesting is... Is that if she's Monica Rambo, that is interesting for another reason that I, I didn't think about until just now. But we'll talk about it. There is an article in there. Yeah. There's an article for people about it, and I will put it in our... I put it in the notes, so too, about Monica Rambo already. Oh, did you? Yep. Okay. Yep, which is why that's interesting that they used her name for that, which makes sense, kind of. Um blah 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 blah. You're hosting, so I'm gonna put you last in the notes so I don't fuck it up. <laughs> Cause I get confused. Oh, um Marvel. Well, how are they gonna weave that in? Well, they weaved in all this other retcon, why not? <laughs> And as usual, I'm fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> All of it. <laughs> oh shit! I forgot to put stuff on the on the Discord, huh? This dog is probably gonna eat things or poop on things or something. Hopefully, it doesn't or bark. bark. 
or bark. <laughs> Who the fuck knows? Oh, my know? God. Jen, me too. I sit there. I hit. I'll, I'll tell the story when we get there. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, let me see here. Did you invite Big Voice Jay to be on the show and to do the bumpers live? Wouldn't that be fun? Just really like just turn on. I mean, I did listen to an audio book. Some kind of audiobook. effects on the mic. I'm like, great, 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 great. Like mm-hmm. that would be so great. I'm pretty sure one of my cats just pooped and it smells so bad. <laughs> it's so bad. Do do do. Um. Uh, da 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 da. Okay. I am now just about ready if you guys are just about ready. Hey, we're only five minutes behind. That's not bad. Awesome. I will take that any day. There's four people here that can't even. <laughs> hey! Are, are we half of them? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Uh, as long as we're yet. only half of them, that's okay. <laughs> right. uh, where is the Geek Grills? So I can retweet your tweet to the tweets. Oh yeah, I should retweet our tweet. I'm gonna retweet our tweet. Twitters. Retwitter the tweet. I'm gonna retweet the twitters to the tweetified to the tweetification of the 18th power of the of the of the twittering. Right. Got yeah. it. Yeah, you got it. I got uh, it. Mostly, I was Not just curious. Re- That's an entirely different thing. Mm-hmm. Hey, I can hear it. Yeah, but it sounds like it's your mic mic. <laughs> and we don't use that one anymore. Nope. Which one do we use now? Big J's. I didn't know we used Big J's already. And I don't <laughs> We're using have all it. of Big J's now. Where is well, it in the file? If I have it, I can use it real quick. I can change it real quick. Well, the way I'm hearing that is bad. <laughs> anyway, it sounds like it's coming through your mic or something. That's because that's how you're hearing it. Yeah, don't. No, the routing to you is like that. The routing to them is different. Oh. You're literally you sure? hearing well, it right, as if I'm talking. But it's not going to be usable unless I send you a new one. Because it was really, really long. And I had to taper the end okay. into a fade to make it usable during the show. Okay, so we don't want to do bumpers. You'll, just, you'll edit them in? I will edit them in. Okay. But I will send you the edited file for future use. Okay, absolutely. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. No, the reason it is going to sound like uh, communication to you guys, because it is, technically it's routing mm-hmm. through my Skype to you, but then it's going from from the actual audio, the audio on the computer to the actual recording. Gotcha. So, yeah, it's a little weird. Um, I just need this to be... So I always have to explain to Barney, like, no, no, don't worry. I'm hitting mute so they can't hear it. Only you can hear me cough. Like Yeah, but the way I have it is um, I have it set up with the two sound cards. So yeah. I can talk to – technically, I could, like, talk to them and then they couldn't hear you. And then I could do all kinds of weird secret talking. I could talk to you guys and they couldn't hear me and that'd be <laughs> weird. Okay. Um, uh, I'm I'm good. Ready? I don't know why I just yep. edited co-host with a hyphen because I just fucking needed to do that for some reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, I'm gonna look at my timestamp. Eight, about eight minutes. I just need to remember that. Yeah. Um. I just want to just give me one more quick sound test, real quick. Sorry, one more. Okay. Um, testing the sound. Yeah. Good. All right. That's good. All right. Mostly because I turned the sound off to you guys, so I just want to make sure I'm not getting any bleed. All right, Alinda, one more time. Okay, testing mine. Testing the sound to my mic. Testing the sound of your microphone. All right, sounds mm-hmm. good. All right, you guys are... All right, we're good. Let's let's okay. do stuff and things and, and make a podcast. All right, ready. Let's do it. <laughs> Hello and uh, welcome to episode 127 of the Geek Grills podcast and live stream. Our topic today, letting you know right off the bat, we are spoiling Captain Marvel. Um, We've got all our regular up-to-the-date news and what we've been up to first, so we'll give another spoiler warning before we start spoiling the shit out of that great movie. 
I am Ember. I'm also known as Nine of Twelve. And I am with my co-hosts, both of them, all three in one place again. Hooray! Yay! <laughs> Yay. And, uh, also known as True New. Hello. And the Jen. Hi. Wee. I feel like so it's like you... like the time space continuum is like at risk right now. It probably should be careful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually I ran into that fan I ran into and she was like you used to all three be there all the time, right? <laughs> <laughs> you used to all be grills. <laughs> so, what have you been up to this geeky week? How about you, Linda? Uh, well, so, as some of you may know, I teach crochet classes um, over at the Joann's. And um, on Friday, I got ghosted by my student. <laughs> so, oh my I was God. just like, I showed up and they didn't. Uh, and then on Saturday, I went to go teach a class that I had signed up, that I had scheduled, and I got an extra student who was not the <laughs> student that ghosted me Friday, was a different person. <laughs> but then as I was leaving the store, the student that ghosted me was actually there, found me, and was like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, that's good at <laughs> <I> was, least. <laughs> yeah, I just wasn't expecting it. And I was, she was like, I signed up for the, the next class. You do that one. And I was like, okay, I'll see you then. Um, <laughs> um, sure. <laughs> sure, just I wish you could have called or something, told the store they would have called me. Um in any event. And then I got a new job. Started Hooray. my new job on Monday. What is it? All I saw is that it's sciencey. You were wearing gloves. Oh I'm yeah. Happy. So it's um the place is called Skin Path and they basically they get in samples that have been taken from doctors, like biopsies and incisions, so and they um cut them and put them on slides and then our doctors upstairs like do consults and look at it mm. um so you know looking for anything abnormal like anything from cancers to um they run the gambit so it's 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 good i feel like i'm actually like helping people rather than just sitting at a desk all day it, i'm learning lots of new things uh it's a whole new system i've never been in a medical field before so it's a, it's, it's lots of, I've taken lots of notes, so many cool. notes <laughs> and it's, um, I'm up on my feet a lot. So I'm hoping that this plus my new, well, it's not new, getting back to portion control will actually help me lose <laughs> some weight. <laughs> so that'd be nice. <laughs> At least you're like, you're busy with your hands. That helps with like, I know workplace environments where you're not, kind of busy with things that's oh, the, yeah. those are the worst so oh, that's definitely good and and it's 7 to three thirty, so i get off real early and i get Yay. to do other things with my day and you get like some husband free like afternoon time like you could like craft and stuff <laughs> or stream your crafting i mean yeah i need stuff. to i need to get back <laughs> into that i i couldn't do it yesterday because we had a game so We'll see. And the the day, the first day that I I did because I wasn't used to being on my feet because I spent the last six years at a desk job, I literally crashed for two hours when I got home. I was just like, and eh, nap time. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been thinking of you a lot with the uh, that meme that's making the rounds now about how crocheting is witchcraft. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it is. I agree. <laughs> Because it is witchcraft. She sits there with two wands muttering and cursing. And then a couple <laughs> hours later, blanket witchcraft. Witchcraft. <laughs> it's, like, it's very Linda. effective witchcraft, though. Yes. She makes actual creatures, which is, you know, leveling up. <laughs> so how about you, Jen? How was your week? Really busy this week. Um, It's funny how, like, friggin' busy it is when you don't have like an actual job I feel like I'm doing more working now <laughs> than I did when I had like a job um so I went to go see Captain Marvel at the fan event uh which was awesome because you I you, I have a Cinemark pass so I basically used two of my credits and so I only had to pay like ten dollars and you go you get the movie and you get a bag of popcorn and I forgot to bring it so I could show it. Damn it. Uh, you get this cool coin that goes with my Avenger coin from the Avenger fan event. Um, mm -hmm. So it was super cool. Um, so I went and saw uh, Captain Marvel, of course, um, which I have to say when you go to the fan event, I was a little bit surprised that, but then I was thinking about it later. It makes sense. The only trailers that we saw were two Disney trailers. 
and neither of them were Avengers. So well, I, I make I sense. Think there's a reason for that. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, well, like there was kind of one later, but <laughs> well, my my husband and I were talking about that. We we're like, a, there's the stingers, which I'm sure we'll we'll get to, um, and b, if you're seeing this movie. You are more than likely going to go see Endgame. And they probably like, don't. And there's a lot of people point. that don't want. Like, I'm at the point now where I'm not watching trailers. Mm-hmm. Um, just like the last trailer that I saw for her, for Captain Marvel, was the teaser trailer. And the last mm-hmm. one I saw for Endgame was the teaser trailer. I actually don't watch the full trailers anymore unless I'm at the theater. So I, I think I did see one, actually, now that I think about it, when I went to a movie before. But uh, regardless... um. There was a trailer for some other Disney thing, and then a trailer for Frozen 2, which I'm now going to start calling mm-hmm. Frozen Two Legs, because <laughs> all of the female characters are wearing pants. And literally all I could think of the entire trailer is Frozen 2 Legs, we get to have two. Like, because <laughs> they're always in dresses, and now they're like mm-hmm. progressively woman-run country, and they are all free to wear pants. So there yep. was that. Um. Which, I mean, if you haven't seen the... Like, for our listeners, if you haven't seen the Frozen 2 trailer, it's actually very, very interesting because there's no talking in it whatsoever. It's all just kind of sweeping landscapes and showing action. And my God, the water effects. Mm -hmm. I thought it was real ocean. Like, the very, very beginning, before you see the characters, I was like, what movie about the sea are we going to see? Yeah. It's real weird. It's a really bizarre trailer, but I, I I was just laughing. They all had pants, and I was just like, "Oh, she gets to wear pants now." And then her sister shows up. And I was like, "Oh, she gets to wear pants too." This is exciting. Yeah. Did you see Wreck It Ralph too? Uh, no, mm-hmm. I did not. Ralph wrecks the internet. Yeah, there's this great. Um, I mean, spoilers, but whatever. It's on. It's Red been Box. out for a while now. Um, I mean, I think it's they, okay. <laughs> there's this great Disney does a great job making fun of themselves. They bring in like Star Wars and princesses and everything, and like there's this. Uh, uh, Vanellope <laughs> introducing them to like sweatpants and all the princesses. Oh, that's like, right. Oh, this is like the God. pajamas, the princess pajama <laughs> yeah. pants. It's awesome. Oh, okay. I gotta watch that. Oh, okay. So I've all other than that, I've been doing lots of homework. Uh, I've been driving, um, which is delivering food in, in an attempt to make money. Um, and then I did the Diamond Club Stream Team movie draft because Curly needed a oh. partner. Uh, Curly needed a partner for Team Drunk Kids Gaming, so um, that was an adventure. Uh, Yeah, so it got real weird because Avengers came up so late in the order, and there are so many things that are such, like, you just don't know what's going to be worth anything. And for those of you that don't know how the movie draft works, basically, it's like like fantasy football, but with selecting how well the movies are going to do over the summer. Um, We We did movie draft light for last... Uh, last Geek Girls with right. me and Jen. Yeah. Or oh, you in September? <laughs> or you, me in September. Whoever it was, one yeah, of you. One of you did it. <laughs> no, um, you guys did the movie thing. Yeah, so we did, we have the worst movies. Um, they're really bad. <laughs> it's really exciting. Um, actually, no, we um, we went for The Lion King. We're hoping that really that's going to put up a strong showing. Uh, uh, Toy Story 4 was another big one that we went for. Um, yeah, it was real weird. Um, I didn't know how to use the system and we spent an hour just getting the tech to work. So by then I think we were all just like, oh God, just do this draft. Like we just got to get this draft done. (laughs) And then we had video and then there was no video and then it was like video in Skype, but then video talking on discord. And I'm like, okay, I I don't even know anymore. Um, (laughs) uh, so there was that, that was fun. Uh, and, uh, played, uh, a new character in my Pathfinder campaign. So um, basically, I think I explained to Linda last time, but basically we're playing, uh, there's like a point of the campaign that we were playing in with our characters that are mythic and super awesome and whatever. And I play a dwarf inquisitor and that's great. And we, there was like five or 10 years that we kind of just skipped uh, because in the story we, we did, it happened. And so we're going back and playing through those years, but as like just people in Waterdeep is where it's starting. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to make this little like chickadee. So I made a little halfling druid and she's super silly and I have a kitty and my my kitty is there to attack people and it's really terrible and I'm completely useless in almost every way. So it was really fun. 
Uh, it reminded me of September trying to play her druid in D&D. And Rob was like, well, why don't you just do it? She's like, I don't have anything. I can't do <laughs> anything yet. Like, literally, there is nothing I could do right now. <laughs> Um, so it's going to be fun, but it's kind of weird alternating between the two campaigns because we're basically like playing super amazing, awesome, powerful characters. And I'm playing stupid little halfling druid that is pretty much useless. (laughs) So we'll (laughs) we'll see how that goes. But yeah, it was a busy week. Cool. Uh, I've been sewing some stuff, but it's the same stuff I talked about before. We, um, my husband's band, the Peculiars, go to the Peculiars.band, um, they release their stuff, and then they haven't had the official release party. That's next week at Delaney's, but we went to Charlotte, and that was kind of a big deal. It was this really cool place, this, like, dive rock and roll club, like, big Elvis mural on the side. It's called the Skylark Social Club, and some other owners of clubs in Charlotte showed up to check them out. That's cool. And a bunch of, like, people we know from Burlesque that I haven't seen in forever, and... My um, I have lost enough weight that my old school, like from the eighties, uh, biker style leather fits, and huh. I felt so me. I had like my boots and my leather and the peculiar cool T shirt, and I was handling merch, and I'm like, oh, I miss my youth. This is cool. Awesome. These are my people. That's exciting. <laughs> That's really awesome. Uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And let me see, I got, uh, my friend Chrissy works at Hanes and hooks us up with bags of socks and hoodies and stuff. And she was, she messaged me the other night. She's like, what uh, college teams your kids into? I'm like, don't give us any NC State stuff. My son doesn't go there anymore. It will be mean. Um, He's like, what about hockey? Oh, hockey. Well. (laughs) <laughs> the Knights and then the Sabres and Tampa Bay and the you know and she gave us a bunch of small and medium hoodies that'll fit my younger boys of my oldest and my youngest and then there was no size on this Las Vegas Golden Knights shirt that is comfortable and good looking Yay. and soft little zipper thing it's not even a hoodie it's just a really cool shirt and it fit me <laughs> I'm keeping it so I love it, and I've been wearing it every day since. And it's like, even though it's not a hoodie, it's got the kangaroo pocket, and I love those. <laughs> but I can't go to the Frog Pants meetup in Vegas still uh, in April unless a miracle so happens. It makes you so sad. So I'm wearing it every day, and it's kind of like this bittersweet thing. But I mean, whatever. I still have actually history like connected to that team and stuff. So. There's that. Um, Heresy and Hearsay reached a landmark. Last week, we had our first troll. (laughs) Joy. Joy. That's when you know you're a real podcast, when you have finally had somebody troll your Twitch channel while you're trying to record. (laughs) And I'm producing, and and Daniel's not in, like, Barney's not in the chat, so he doesn't even know this is happening. Except that I'm like, the guy came in, and he was, like, asking what seemed like a legitimate question. So I was like, hey, we have a live listener, and they want to ask this question. And then we answered it, and then they started with the troll stuff. <sighs> but whatever. It wasn't bad enough I had to ban them. It mm-hmm. wasn't the sexist shit we have to put up with. So at least there's that. <laughs> what are you guys even doing? <laughs> oh, but it was weird, because like, that's a religion and politics, politics cast, sorry. So it was like right. asking if we believe in the I don't know, geocentric theory. And then, and we're like, uh, <laughs> no, because of science. And <laughs> then, uh, do you know the whole, you know, creation story is blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, actually, there's two even in Genesis, if you want to get into that. And not if be you really want to get real technical, it's woven from three no. different texts. But just saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, no, there's nothing metaphorical. And to prove that I was wrong, quoted a gave me a bible verse oh, and i was God, like gross <laughs> okay just trolling i'm out just quit responding <laughs> clearly but like, you are not worth coming up time. in the world <laughs> <laughs> uh ran trivia fourth creek again started that back up at the brewery Yay. and i'm uh, drinking fourth creek resolution ipa today <laughs> and it was a music themed trivia a Come lot on. of fun really difficult really good crowd a lot of teams showed up and I still had to do tiebreakers. <laughs> yeah, I was actually consulting with Ibit about how I run my tiebreakers, so that was kind of fun. 
So I guess that's about it for our Geeky Week. Next mm-hmm. up, time for the Geek Grapevine. So this isn't going to be spoiler yet. Let's no. talk about the box office <laughs> Captain Marvel, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely wanted to mention it um, just because I didn't buy it in the movie draft. Fuck. Um, <laughs> and uh, I was like, I don't know if it's going to do that well. I mean, yeah, the first night was great, but uh, damn it. Um, especially because we let that team have Shazam and Captain Marvel. So technically they have both Captain Marvel movies, which really kind of pissed me off too. Um, Mm -hmm. but that's a whole other thing. Um, so, uh, as of right now, uh, the Captain Marvel movie is, uh, destroying its, even its own box office projections. So, uh, 455 million in the opening weekend, which is ridiculous. Um, that's bigger than... Wonder Woman, uh, it's actually even bigger than... Uh, That's th- because it's a better movie than Wonder Woman. Well, yeah, I really liked Wonder Woman, though, so I can't really... I really, I really Wonder, Woman Wonder Woman was great until the third act. It was great until they're like, let's shove an entire story into this movie that doesn't need to fit. Um, no, I agree. Uh, it's great. And <laughs> the first two-thirds of that movie are phenomenal. And the opening scene with her like initial origin, like the, that... Oh, God, so good. So are well we done. getting into like a cup measuring contest? Is that but, what's happening right Yeah, now? we are. It's a vagina measuring right. contest. Uh, who <laughs> has the more gl- golden clad vagina of them all? Um, in the world of in lady my superhero opinion, movies. in my opinion, Captain Marvel. <laughs> but continue. I I agree. If you're looking at the film as a whole, Captain Marvel was better. But Gal Gadot is an incredible Wonder Woman. Um, so. Yeah, pretty impressive. Very happy about that. Uh, they estimated 125 million in the first weekend, so I'd say 455 was a, a nice <laughs> extra showing. Uh, yeah, yeah. So money can be made. So give us Black Widow. Do it. Yep. I almost wore my Black Widow shirt, but then I was like, oh, let me let me wear something a little more neutral. I wore my wa- <laughs> I wore my wasp shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember what I wore. Oh, <laughs> my motorcycle jacket. So, <laughs> I'm in love with being able to wear it again. <laughs> so, all right, Hello Kitty. I'm not even open to that. Sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I, I literally answer. put it in there just because I want everybody mm. to know that it's a thing that none of us ever wanted. It's happening. There's a Kitty English <laughs> language film in the works at New Line. So, oh, it's going to be an American uh, Hello Kitty movie. Uh, Sanrio says they're they're into it. Just what we never wanted. That's all I have to say about that. I just want to. Plenty of people do. That's your fan yeah. thing. Fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This next one makes me really sad. I still haven't watched that video. Um, I know it's gonna make me cry. <laughs> watch it though. It's good. It's definitely worth a watch. Um. So if you are living on a rock and did not know, um. So, sadly, uh, Alex Trebek has uh, stage four pancreatic cancer. So, mm. he uh, put a video out there uh, about how he's handling it. And I, I really respect uh, the fact that he wanted to do that. And, uh, you know, just being such a figure uh, for so long, I'm, I'm really glad. Uh, now, he only has three years left on his contract. And he does say he intends to, to work out his contract. So, mm-hmm. yeah. He's like the face of Jeopardy. Like that's who. That's who, what and who you think of. It's when funny you hear though, that word. because he's not even the original host. But you're right. Nope. Nobody thinks of anything else <laughs> when they think of Jeopardy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I think even worse than like even more than like even Bob Barker for like Price is Right. Like mm-hmm. Price is Right. They did a good job choosing Drew Carey. He's right in that role, taking over after Bob Barker. But mm-hmm. like I don't know if I ever. But Barker's still the face. Yeah, right? Bart. You still think like, of Bob he's Barker. He's Gilmore. The Price is Wrong, bitch. Forever, <laughs> forever, forever. Um, but yeah, like I don't know what you do. Well, that was all. That was all those those things. Price is Right, Wheel of Fortune, Jeopardy. They all had their person, their face, and that's just what's in your head now, forever, forever. <laughs> that and and Will Ferrell doing Alex Trebek. <laughs> yep. <laughs> this has been Celebrity Jeopardy, and uh, once again, nobody wins. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so God. road spills are kind of Jen's thing, but I um, found one. I said I well, I said Jen one earlier in the week. Oh yeah, I so got you. I'm gonna I'm gonna put that in there too. And uh, 
because Boilermakers and... <laughs> am I going to get an autoplay that video? I am. Thing. Damn it. What is with these websites? Oh. These websites are the worst. It's okay. I don't... Yeah. Holy moly. Right? Okay. Is... All right. All right. All right. So we've got... Which one? I've got them. Oh, great. Shit. All right. I've got Modelo. That's the one I have. Um, that's the one. That's the one I posted. That's the one she just put in, but for some reason, yeah, the other one, the fireball one, I'm having trouble making show up. All right, well, so. let's do it next week because I saw it, but I didn't pull it up. Um, but I've got this one. All right, so this one this week, that one next but, week. But, 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 oh it, my it, god, that's so. That oh god. To- all right. I know. I agree. I especially because it's fireball. It makes me really happy. But that's gonna be fun. There. Uh, let's see. <laughs> A beer truck crash spills boxes of. Oh, Jesus, there's beer everywhere. Mandela everywhere. <laughs> Drivers east of Los Angeles. Of course, it's like east side LA. Like, <laughs> oh, I feel like there's, oh, this is so oh, uncomfortable. Careful. <laughs> careful. So Light awesome. blue boxes of Modelo were scattered on, a, and, on and below a freeway overpass when a beer truck crashed over this. Oh, Jesus Christ. I, uh, okay. Wow. Oh, Jesus. The shipment of Modelo Especial spilled from the truck on the westbound 10 freeway. I always like the quotes, so now, let's see the quote right, from I this officer. The They're the always so good. The double entendre that officer <laughs> dropped by mistake. No, no. They, I think they do it on purpose. Like, they've gotten so good lately. <laughs> this is one of those circumstances where alcohol is involved, said CHP officer <laughs> Rodrigo Jimenez. The good news is that there are no DUI drivers here, and there were no arrests. Oh, that's, that's that's good. It's good, buddy. Okay, so yeah, definitely intentional. But... <laughs> um, oh my god. So apparently, I mean, the, tried other to break. the driver though. Yeah. Oh yeah, no serious injuries. Everybody's okay. We try yeah, to stick like to the he, ones he where nobody lost gets hurt. <laughs> got to the ramp. Yeah. 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 He tried to break and didn't do a very good job of it. Oh my god. The video on this is pretty impressive, actually. That is just like a pile of friggin' beer. Just cans of beer everywhere. Holy we could go ahead. And, we could go ahead and do the fireball because if they're both alcohol, yeah, that's they, fine. They're, they're we're just gonna spill. We're gonna spill <laughs> alcohol all over the roads today. Um, let's see. Oh my god. Okay, tractor trailer carrying fireball cinnamon whiskey rolls over in Massachusetts. Oh my god. Um, I still think it's funny that oh, when I got married. There. Every oh, single one of my that would be friends. Delicious. <laughs> right. It'd be perfect. You're ready to go. When I got married, everybody felt that that was the alcohol to buy me. So I had like <laughs> 20 bottles of fucking Fireball whiskey. And people like for years, people be like, you really like Fireball? And I was like, it's, it's, it's all right. It's, it's convenient. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. The crash occurred after 1 p.m. on March 7th on I-495. Oh, it is snowing. Oh, gross. A lot of people mm-hmm. live in that area. Interrupting traffic and prompting a massive cleanup effort. Uh, let's see here. Uh, advisory. Uh, Westboro, Mass. Dot says all lanes closed on 495 southbound. Truck crash and cargo spilled. Oh my God, Jesus! <laughs> it was closed for hours. I still just can't. I just want a lovely good vision on my head. I mean, like jumping out with my uh, <laughs> yeah. travel mug and scooping up some fireball snow cone. Yeah, if you're going to be stuck behind <laughs> that, like, and not be able to get off the road for a few hours, you might as well enjoy yourself. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I just wanted to see, like, oh man, no good quotes on this one. Though. That's a bummer. Those are always the yeah, best. Yeah. I always like when they're just no oh. funny cops in Boston. Yeah, apparently not. <laughs> they're all super serious right now. That's okay. Mm-hmm. That's a good one too. Okay, There's so alcohol involved ever were. <laughs> ever were. The, uh, yeah, the Boston cops are all too worried about the stereotype of being Irish drunkards anyway. <sighs> so, main topic this week, everyone. Tune out now, come back later, mm-hmm. whatever. I mean, I guess in the notes I could put a timestamp of when we stop spoiling. <laughs> if you yeah. want to listen later. Or just save this episode for after you've seen the movie and argue with us then. But we're going to spoil the shit out of Captain Marvel. Yeah. Okay. That's so, what's happening. First top of the tops. The new opening Marvel animation. Animation. <laughs> nice job. Animation. <laughs> animation. Uh, the animation where they have changed the whole, like, showing all the history of comics type thing that they used to do to a Stan Lee tribute. 
and uh, I, like I don't Jeff know if that's... wrote here, I almost started crying to begin with. Like, I was, yeah, I had tears in my eyes, and I'm like, crap, the movie's gonna start, I'm not gonna be able to see. So I'm like, I started clapping, and I was the only one, and then a couple other people started, and they stopped. <laughs> no, <laughs> we, yeah, we, I was we had full We had full, um, like, applause Aww. for that, and um, I don't know if that's only for this movie or if that's going to be it for like the rest of I the Marvel movies. That they'll continue it. I bet they'll keep it. We'll see. Um, I think for right now they have to. It just it's just it's too it's too new. And I honestly though I thought like it was a really nice touch. Like mm-hmm. it, I wasn't expecting it, so it it was really nice. It was yeah. Um, I'm glad I was surprised by that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. And and I'm glad I clapped. I mean, we didn't get a full blown applause, and because I'm in a small town, I mean, the theater only probably had twenty mm-hmm. people in it. <laughs> I was with a bunch of crazy Marvel fans. So that's the people that go to the fan events. So <laughs> yeah, so it was like <sighs> everybody right? gets excited. Like the first time they like her, like when her costume got colored the right color, you heard like the like people weren't like full on cheering, but you definitely heard more excitement in the theater than you normally would when you go to just a normal showing i was glad i broke the ice on it though because Mm -hmm. during when sans cameo happened yeah um somebody like behind me did just go woo and then people all applauded yeah (laughs) i think i had broken the ice (laughs) oh my god and then the the fact that like the best part about stan's cameo is he's sitting on the bus reading Oh, yeah. Uh, so yeah. I had seen Kevin Smith's tweet where he's like, I'm bawling my eyes out. And I yeah. thought it was because of <laughs> the, the opener. Mm-hmm. And then and then I was like weirded out by the cameo because I didn't really get it at first. And yeah. I was like, oh, because he, he's repeating himself. I'm like, are they having to fly him in? I thought they had a bunch of these pre-filmed. <laughs> because he's, he's like, true believer, true believer. Like repeating the same line, and then <laughs> he's got he's holding a mall rat script. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of you out there probably know, some of you may not know, but before there was an MCU <laughs> for these movies, uh, Stanley did a cameo in this little movie called Mall Rats because Kevin, Kevin Smith is a stupidly obsessed comic book fan. Yes, and after the success of Clerks, mm-hmm. he did Mall Rats, and they kind of brought their nerd in. Mm-hmm. And well, that was the right. Got Stan to do this cameo where he just does his little true believers line, and so the <laughs> oh. cameo in Captain That's, Marvel. It's the right time. I didn't even realize. Yes, it was 1995. Yes, yes exactly. <laughs> so Captain Marvel set in 1995, and she's like going after that scroll, trying to track him down on the bus, and she's who's looking at everybody in the face, trying to figure out if they've transformed, and it, and then there's this big script in front of his face that says mall rats and he pulls it down <laughs> and she just smiles at him <laughs> and he's, he's practicing his, practicing his line that he had in mall rats and it's yet yeah, it's in that year so that's why kevin smith was bawling his eyes out and oh. i'm all choked up about it too because it really was fantastic i got so much more focus like, and my... the cameo was as himself in this first movie after he died in the first, like, oh, just there's so much meta going on right there. <laughs> like, as himself practicing lines as himself for another movie in that year. Oh my god. No, I, I felt like that was really appropriate. I, it was really well done. Uh, just thinking about the fact of the setting and that whole scene with like the bus and the cars and everything else, they did such a good job, of course, using Blockbuster, of mm-hmm. course. And then, oh, that was another personal thing I had. Sorry, I forgot to put it in the notes, but I know you saw it on Facebook. Because I got so excited. One of the best things in the movie for me is Fury's car. Right. Oh, yeah. Fury's driving Impala I used to own. <laughs> and it's period and makes sense. Because the movie is set in 1995. And so the, the car that he was driving was like the 94-year Impala, which... Sorry, I am also a car nerd. <laughs> <That's one of laughs> my but my mother worked for GM when I was growing up. So not only she helped build that car, she got one of the only 5,000 they put out in that year that were for civilians. 
Right. The rest of them were all like cop cars. So it makes mm-hmm. sense for him to have the model year they brought back the Impala because they didn't make them for like a couple decades. They brought it back in 94. And like I always had trouble getting parts for mine because mm-hmm. the cop car ones had a different chip that was it wouldn't hold back <laughs> mm-hmm. the speed on it. And they had a few different things in the cooling and exhaust system. So like of all the stuff going on in that movie, Fury's driving her onto the base, showing her shield ID, and I'm like, and I go to Rob, oh my god, it's flawed, it's flawed. Because mm-hmm. when my mom gave me the car eventually, we got a license plate, and it was Vlad the Impala. <laughs> <laughs> but Nick Fury mm-hmm. drove my car. And speaking of that, so it's, it's a good segue. Nick, who knew Fury was a cat dad? <laughs> yes, hold right. on. We can't go. We're well, like jumping ahead. I haven't even gotten out of the bus oh, no, scene yet. No. Hold on. Hold on. I'm sorry. We've got just, we've got like cuz we're going to we've got a million things to talk about. Mm-hmm. So let's <laughs> let's try to like hold up. So, <laughs> first of all, like I said, one of the things that I really liked was the fact that they did a really good job of setting the scene of the time. It looked it didn't look like that fake Hollywood. Like old school, they did a really good job of making it look like an integrated world, and that was really nice for me, of course, using Blockbuster. And one of my favorite movies is what she picks up at the Blockbuster, which oh, is the right that stuff. Too. I was which, explaining that to my husband, um, which was when he enjoyed the dog fight. I was like, you know, there was foreshadowing, right? Yeah, so the mm-hmm. exactly, and also I think there's oh God, there's so much good stuff there, and it also is like it's so the, the right stuff was great that was just like a nice little toss in right there at that part um and then of course at the beginning of everything i am delighted by how much phil colson i got to have i didn't wasn't expecting it and he's one of my favorite characters so i was super excited uh, to have <laughs> him be there um and yes so going forward nick fury is a cat dad yes mhm <laughs> cuz the they picked up the cat named Goose. Named Goose. Like a- after the big chase and like Colson no, Colson let them go at the base where they picked up the cat. Um which again, so spoilers, not actually. Well, I had cat. seen a trailer with him fussing <laughs> over the cat. Yeah, yeah he's, I hadn't, she's I like hadn't. Fury. I, I uh. avoided the trailers, so I didn't know there was a cat involved. Ah. <laughs> so I was like, yeah. oh, you're sweet. Sort of a cat. Sometimes you're. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the a thing. mother flirking cat. <laughs> mother flirking cat. Is like I was like sometimes you're CG and I don't know why. Oh, that's why they're doing that. <laughs> yeah. But it's okay. Well, like, Peter would have a fit if you threw it up in that position against. Right. You know. Against the box. <laughs> the cabinets when they're going into space. I did also enjoy that at the blockbuster, like she shoots at a poster, which I recognized being uh, the True Lies poster with Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, and I was nice. like, "Whoa!" Like the oh, it brings me back. I mean, and all the music, of course, was designed for that too. Um, yeah, I, actually, yeah, the soundtrack was really fantastic for that, and that is something I do want to go ahead and say. Um, I mean, of course, we don't give them any credence, like, screw all the stupid incels, but... Well, on. we're going to get into that. All the opportunity, we're not heavy-handed about the feminist stuff. But yeah, we'll get into that. Yeah, we'll we're going to have to get into that. That's a that's definitely a big... Um, there's a, a definite conversation I mean, the to be had there. Um, so, bef- before we get there, uh, so, the music the, okay. nostalgia in general, though, of course, you had no doubt... Um, you had, I'm pretty sure we had, uh, let's see, I know we had just a girl when she was fighting. Uh, mm-hmm. some people thought that was a little weird and a little forced. I didn't. I loved it. I was fucking happy as shit. Mm-hmm. Um, God, oh, there's so many. Of course, I know we got some, uh, some TLC at one point. I'm almost positive. Um, yeah, Waterfall. That's right. Yeah, that's waterfall. right. And then we had, I'm just trying to go off pure memory here. Um, Nirvana. Um, Nirvana. Oh, of course. Of course. There was Nirvana. Oh, that's right. The gar. Oh, oh, God. Okay. Yeah. I had a moment. Okay. (laughs) So Shirley Manson was one of my first, like, female, like, musician girl crushes. And so watching, uh, like, a super female superhero, 
like comic book movie and then having Shirley Manson singing, I'm just like, yes, everything good is happening in my life right now. <laughs> um, that made me very happy as well. Um, yeah, I, the nostalgia was really nice, made me very happy. Um, and yeah, now, sadly, we're going to have to bring it down a little bit because we definitely need to talk about the situation with Rotten Tomatoes and all that chaos. Well, let's let's talk about the scroll situation. Uh, sure. So, because okay. Linda wanted Linda wanted to express about that, and I did not know this character's history very well before either. And I was wondering going in, like, what the hell? Because we know the Kree are bad. Okay, well, wait a minute. <laughs> Do you want to get into that when we get into the difference between the comic book story and the movie, or did you want to? Because um, there's a whole bunch of stuff in there. That... Yeah, but I think I mean... this is separate. I mean, like, the short version is, is that, and you can get into this when we when we get there, but the short version is that in the comics, both the scroll and the Kree are... Are bad. Are, are bad. Yeah. They're just kind of bad in their own ways, but in, in the movie, they actually do the twist of the scrolls are just kind of refugees that are just trying to get away and find their own, like, place in the, in the galaxy or the universe, so I actually kind of like that twist because if you look back through the movie, you kind of realize that I think except, except for like one instance, um, the scrolls don't actually ever kill anyone. Right. Yeah. So which like that's a subtle thing. Like they're fighting, obviously. They're trying to get the information, but it's for a different reason than you think it is. And they actually don't really hurt anyone. So it's like, hey. That, that, good job, movie. I did not expect that. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, I was trying to figure out how they were going to tell that, and I think they did a good job. The standoff in the house was really well done because, like, that scene was so believable. There was like the right amount of tension, but also it was still comic book movie comfortable. Like mm-hmm. it wasn't because I don't know. Sometimes they can when you're doing. We're talking about like an, a dramatic action film. They just take it too far out, and then it's just there's that moment, and it's just like this person is bad and this person is bad and everything terrible is happening. I don't know. I just felt like the tension was right in that scene. There was the right balance of comic relief tension. And yes, this is a big deal, but also we're going to make some jokes about the fact that this alien is <laughs> sipping on a cup. Of yeah, like... And then, and then Nick Fury with his glass of sweet tea, like yeah. for half of the, <laughs> the time that they were in Louisiana, he always has a glass of sweet tea. <laughs> By the way, the tease about the eye thing uh, uh, really oh, God, stressed me out so much. I was like, <laughs> come on, dude. Like, when is the eye going to go? We all know this is the <laughs> point is that at some point in this movie, you're going to take his eye. Where is it? You know? Yeah, it was kind of cute. They, like, teased it and teased it and teased it. Oh, God. Yeah, no. But we'll I, get there, too. Yes, Although totally. Someone, someone did post up, like, a picture of, ah, oh, I see where Thanos got those slash marks from and, like, showed the three scars on his, <laughs> on his face and then the little claws of the, the flurkin. <laughs> oh, God. I, I really enjoyed that a lot. Um, the... Uh, okay. So let's just get away, get out of the way the, the yucky stuff so we can get back into the movie stuff. So basically, shit happened because... Weeks ago, Brie Larson made some comments about uh, she specifically did an interview with a reporter who um, I think it was an African-American reporter specifically. And so she did that because she felt like everybody who was reporting on on her movies were all white men. And she felt like she just wanted to see some diversity with it. And so, Mm -hmm. of course, the nasty like super disgusting men and trolls went out there and started posting negative reviews on Rotten Tomato, like already. And so finally, after eight bajillion years, Rotten Tomato has said, okay, fine, we're done. You can't comment on a movie until it's out. Like you just can't do it now. And they actually finally changed their policy. Absolutely. I just hate that it's been this long because it's happened before, too. And this was like the most pointed example of it. But it's definitely been something that's happened before. Um, And the other nice thing, too, is they actually went in and scrubbed comments that were clearly just uh, like they were just trolley bullshit comments. And they scrubbed them out. And the interesting thing is everything went 
from being um, like 42 or 50 percent or whatever to being certified fresh. So it's like, okay, Mm -hmm. how much of that bullshit leading up to it really was these douchebags just being pissed off because Brie Larson was just like, hey, this isn't about white dudes. Um, Now, I have to ask. I want to ask you ladies. um, How did you feel about that? Did you feel like her stunt was, you know, her taking advantage of a platform and pushing an agenda, or do you think it was just an appropriate thing to do to just get a little more diversity? I don't think she, I I don't see it as a stunt. No, I I think her choice of words incited more lashback than perhaps was intended, but the outcome is fine. But I mean, it's, it's not like, like I said, I don't think the feminism was forced in this movie. No. It flowed well, and just like the the multiracial aspects, everything else, it was very like I wouldn't have even thought about it. It was appropriately diverse, right? It was just normal. Yeah, I agree. I I just I'm curious because I've heard both sides of that. I've heard a lot of people say like, oh, you know, this is an actor just pushing it farther than you need to. Blah 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 blah. But you know, I don't think. Why can't she take some credit? I mean, it's sad that the movies even have to talk about. Hey, yeah. We're making sure to include people. like, And she's like, good, I'm glad I was part of something that includes people. And then people are going to attack over that? Calm the fuck down. <laughs> yeah, and I, I honestly, I I love Brie Larson. And I I'm, I was happy that she said something. Um, I'm happy that Rotten Tomatoes did something about it. Because that affects money. That, that affects, you know, if that had been able to stand what if people just look at that percentage and then decide that they're not going to bother you know that's a that's really important that has an actual financial impact so um yeah and and bio cow unfortunately you're right sometimes men do suck there are awesome Mm -hmm. dudes out there though that are raised by lots of strong awesome women and uh recognize the suckitude occasionally that men are able to put out there Mm -hmm. um but yeah, I definitely feel like we had to we couldn't talk about the movie without addressing that at least at some point just because it was such a a big part of of the opening. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I'm really glad I've got men in my life who were before I even saw the movie, people saw it the day before and they're like my, my Tall Thomas. <laughs> Y'all have seen him mm-hmm. on my channel. It's like that movie was awesome and it's only stupid fucking incel dude bros who can't handle a woman be a hero that won't like it. Like, he was just... <laughs> yeah, I mean, man friend enjoyed it. He, I mean, he's a dude. He enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. I mean, what's not to enjoy? My husband, fun. my husband loved it. He was like, that was a great movie. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Rob did, too. He, he, well, he fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one of my besties. Then he was like ran and got a coke because he couldn't believe that happened, and then loved the rest of it. <laughs> so one of my besties, Eric. Uh, he actually he's been on the show before. He came on and talked when we t- when we talked about uh, credit and and stuff like that. Uh, he mm-hmm. came on and uh, uh, he tweeted or he texted me like immediately after seeing it and was like oh my god it was so good blah 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 and uh, hey. he was like <laughs> the only thing that he thought was weird is he felt like the just a girl was a little weirdly placed um and i get that i could see how somebody who doesn't understand how much of like a a fun chick anthem that that is that is why that was so good for me is that that's one of those like oh uh. I could, it's yeah. just fun. It's a fun time song, and it was like the for me, it was the right time. Yeah, yeah, I can see where that's a little might have been a little female centric because they didn't even if they were around in '95 and and into it, they didn't hear it the same way we did. Oh, absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. I mean, I was, yeah. Anyway, yes, times times when we were all uh, <laughs> not as free to do all the things that we wanted to do. Um, like even just play fucking video games and be on a team <laughs> playing video games. Um, oh man, uh, I was like becoming a single mom and having to fight with the Jesus. newspaper to even get a birth announcement. Yeah, Jesus. yeah, 1995. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. That's that's you uh, just nutty. You don't want to know how old I was at that point. <laughs> I think, hey, it's okay. I was gonna say I think <laughs> Linda and I were like, um. Oh, well, you were probably, you were younger than me. So, shit. Now I feel old, too. No, all right. (laughs) I am so old. Whatever. (laughs) It's fine. Um, I earned it all. Half a damn century. 
So as far <laughs> as the diversity of the movie, um, just getting into some of the, I mean, of course, everybody can go back here and, and go through the entire original story. Um, I don't really feel like we need to spend a whole bunch of time doing that, but just a couple facts that are kind of important from the original comic book story. Uh, Marvell, originally a dude in 1967, uh, Ooh. Maria Rambo was actually Monica Rambo and basically took the, the, the mantle of Captain Marvel. She's a police officer. Um, and then she became the Captain Marvel. I think she was the third Captain Marvel, if I remember correctly from the comic books. And she was a member of, and a leader of the Avengers at one point in that run of the comic book. And that was in the eighties, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, and then what's interesting is that as we discussed before we got started, is that they gave the daughters Maria in the movie, best friend Maria, they named her daughter Monica. And I so, think that that's delightful because that is I obviously got to be some, uh, yeah, it's got to yeah. be a good, a good, like, uh, I mean, it touches so my I've heart. So I've got a, I've got a fan theory. And it's just a fan theory. No, I want to hear um, this. <laughs> so like after Black Panther, I thought that maybe they might make Shuri Ironheart. Right. I remember after, that. And after I, Iron Man is gone. Yeah. But Monica's the right age. That's this point. true. That is true. And, but also, yeah. that means Young Avengers. It means maybe we'll get Young <laughs> Avengers. I want Young Avengers. <laughs> um, I want Young Avengers. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay with a lot of this. And I heard Steven Schreger talk about this this morning um, with the original inception of her powers and how Marvel was like protecting her in the proximity of an explosion of like Cree tech and Cree blood being close and she got Cree powers. So they retconned a lot of that, but they left in a lot of things like Jan Rog, like the mentor turned out to be a bad guy in this movie, mm -hmm. um, being in proximity and, and there's a lot of things they just couldn't have. Well, like, no, they couldn't have done the same way. I, I like the way they reworked this origin. Mm -hmm. I I am totally fine with this, and and a lot of it's so close too. enough, true enough. They didn't like just outright delete characters. Um, they still had like the key elements of Marvel being yes. the Doctor and mm -hmm. and being Cree and being on the planet and you know bringing that technology there. And working, they had to work the Tesseract in. And mm -hmm. that, I think, even explains just... her powers better. Because in the comics, it's messy as hell. Like, yeah. the, the Captain Marvel we know by the time we're going to see her in Avengers, to bring her to that level, the way she was in the in the comic books, was years and years and years of comic books and different characters having the powers and taking them to other galaxies and getting more power. Like she just kept accruing more and more powers to get to this mm -hmm. point. Like, I literally, and they wrapped it up pretty neatly. When, when the Tesseract like showed up, I was like, wait, a, I had to take a second and be like, hold on. Where in the timeline is the Tesseract right no, now? No, I freaked out. I was like, wait a minute, what the fuck? How can we have two Tesseracts? The Tesseract's no, on the knew. fucking stone. And I was, I was no, freaking knew. out. I know, Nobody I know. knew that the shield got the Tesseract and were holding on to it from the crew. But I they, forgot. They thought it was free technology. We I, knew that. I forgot because we were timeline shifting because it was <laughs> after the stinger where she shows up. So it was like my brain was like twisted and all like discombobulated. And I'm like, well, then, gotcha. Uh, I thought it was because shield, well, okay, cause shield like had it. fucking time travel. They shoved it into this timeline. Yeah. Perfect. Well, because S.H.I.E.L.D. slash Howard Stark had it after they found it right. out of Captain America's crash ship. They found, they they found it, but not him. Right. So, literally, I guess they gave it to Marvel to... They gave it to Project Pegasus. Pe Project Pegasus. Right. And then that's where it came from. But Correct. it took me, like, a good two minutes to be like, okay, it was in Asgard, and then it was on Earth, and then it was here, <laughs> and then it was over there. It was on Earth, and then it went back to Asgard because, like, Thor yeah. and Loki are like, nah, dude, we're going to take this back to a place where we can yeah. hold stuff in a better place, <laughs> which turned out to be a really great place to put shit that you want your bad guys to get a hold of. Yeah. Uh, and then when Asgard fell, people were like, oh, my God, the Tesseract. I'm like, bitches, you know Loki has it in his back pocket. Yeah. Don't fucking lie. Like, you all know. Right. He looked right. at it. 
<laughs> Everybody <laughs> fucking knows. Me. I know. The moment he looked at it, I was like, cool. So he'll be taking that with him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> kind of what he does. <laughs> um, the origin power, the power. Um, so the origin of her powers I enjoyed. Um, I actually kind of enjoyed the way that they unpeeled her story that we were getting enough snippets and I felt like it was really well done because a lot of times I can put together I can put it together before we get there and I actually was legitimately surprised that the dude bro was a was a douchebag like I wasn't prepared for that Mm -hmm. um that the was done was really well. Yeah, well. it was yeah. A, such a good choice. I was very impressed um, that I was surprised. Um, I was like, oh, he must be a good Cree. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. Hot potato Tesseract. <laughs> yep. Oh, where is the, the Tesseract? It's the Avenger game. <laughs> I did like that. I'm going to take this. I want to take this moment to tell our listeners that we are going to run long today. It's a spoiler episode. That's oh, yeah. what happened. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. FYI, if you aren't aware, we talk a long time about movies. Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> uh, so do you want to the other big shift? Because I definitely have thoughts. Oh, yeah. If we're going to talk about the Tesseract with confusion, uh, we also have to talk about the Fury's Eye. Okay. Um, so I saw this question in the notes. Did we wreck on the Fury Eye thing? Yes. He was well, also a white dude in, who lost it in World War II <laughs> once upon a time. <laughs> I'm really good with our MCU Fury. Uh... But uh, I, I actually think there's an easy way for them to kind of like retcon that. And that is that he uh, is kind of embarrassed that it was an alien cat. So he just yeah. makes it up whenever. Whatever is... He's just like, yeah, no, that's totally how I lost my eye. Nobody actually knows how he lost and his eye. And that's the thing, is that everybody is <laughs> saying it's a retcon, and I'm saying I don't necessarily think it is for the same reason that you just said. It's not necessarily a retcon because we never actually saw it happen. We had a character, right, Fury, who has a lot of ego, say how it happened. I saw a good fan theory in an article I posted here. It will be in our notes um, where someone's like, yeah, he makes up, you know, something kind of like what Linda was saying, but also that he, instead of getting the eye replaced, he wears an eye patch to remind him that never to let his guard down, that this was really a well-written way to, you know, <laughs> remind him, keep himself reminded, because this was an opening of a whole new world, the way they told the story, like, this was his first exposure to uh, aliens, aliens at all, yeah. right? <laughs> Um, but, I mean, retcon for loyalists of comics, I mean, yeah. you, you can't even have that argument if you have enjoyed any of the Nick Fury in his current incarnation. You can't. He was like a white guy fighting World War II against Nazis. He got shrapnel in the eye. It was the first story. And it was an issue of, like, the how his he lost his eye revealed, right? Um, and he got an eye patch instead of getting it, a glass eye so that he could stay with his guys. And then they did it again. They retcon where it was like Wolverine pulling him yeah. out of, uh, not Desert Storm, one of the Gulf Wars. Like it happened there uh, when he was, oh, it was like a caravan rescuing Wolverine or something. I don't know. So like it's it's even been retconned in the comics before. Um, although that second instance, the character had already been reworked to look <laughs> like the Nick Fury we know from NCU. Well, we had we had to figure out how so, to shoehorn Samuel L. Jackson into this movie because he's in every movie. So when they decided that he was going to be in all these movies as Nick Fury, we had to completely redo Nick Fury. I mean, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sure. Why not? No, the one thing I <laughs> the, I love that they gave him his signature thing though, with like <laughs> with the cat. It was like and the cat does scratch him. He's like mother flirking. Yeah, mother flirking. <laughs> Oh, it was a... that was like I love that bit of fan service so much. No, it was really there was so much fan service in this movie, but it also wasn't. Um, it was tasteful fan service, and like I said, yeah. I felt like the nostalgia was tasteful too. People were like, "Oh, it was, a it was like a nostalgia, like pornographic nostalgia fest," and I was like, "I really don't think it was. I think you have to enjoy it from that standpoint." A little bit. It's kind of like Guardians of the Galaxy, right? Like, of course, there's some stupid, goofy shit in there. Like, 
This dude is obsessed with Footloose and Kevin Bacon. Like, this shit is weird. <laughs> like, and that's okay because these characters are just kind of weird. And it's kind of fun to have a, a chick who is in that role, but. Um, but this was so well crafted. So, yes. Oh, and her as a like, character, Carol her Danvers. Her as a character, like, it, yeah. like at the beginning, I was like, she's kind of wooden, but then like you realize as you're going along, oh, the Cree made her that way. Yeah, she's got and a fucking she... implant in her brain, like fucking with her shit. Yeah, and then like as she like remembers herself, like she became, she wanted to be someone I, she became someone I wanted to hang out with. Totally, I wanted to be, yeah. I wanted to be her Maria <laughs> for sure. Oh, before we jump off of the Nick Fury stuff, though, I do want to mention one of the moments that I really enjoyed because I saw it like happening before it was happening, like as it was happening. And I was so impressed um, is one of the reasons I like Phil Coulson um, as a character is because they've always he's just such a well thought out character with such a great arc over a couple different movies, like where he's like getting his card signed by Captain America and his obsession with like old like relic stuff and everything he goes through in Agents well, of I Shield Agents and everything. Oh, so exactly. I just, like, fell oh, more and more. In love I, with I him. just I love him as a character so much that it was so nice that when that thing happened where he was just like he makes that call and I literally like I grabbed the man and I was like, Oh my god, Nick Fury is gonna make this is why he chose him and I literally just, <laughs> and then like and then afterwards Nick Fury is like, we'll see that's somebody that you can like that you that's hard to find or whatever and i'm like yes yeah. yes <laughs> like i'm so excited like that is how you identify a lieutenant it's so good um yeah no that part but made me really happy both nobody at one point yeah right? exactly it was really great to see that with and colson being a rookie yep <laughs> yep oh that, that, that part made me happy things. oh mm-hmm. so good so good. Oh, so good. So, Jen wants to hit the Bechtel test. Oh, totally. Um, mostly because the first thing I did when I left was go to Bechteltest.com uh, <laughs> so that course. I could input it as a thing because it, in fact, did clear the Bechtel test, which is interesting because Easily. Wonder Woman didn't. Black Panther, who had some of the strongest female characters, didn't. And I was very pleasantly surprised. Um, so, if you're not aware, the Bechtel test uh, is... I will start by was it Linda Bechtel is that her name I put the I put the link in there we'll have a link in the notes too but basically um, it looks at how women are represented in in uh, plays or in film um, in theater and I tried to add Captain Marvel but somebody else already had so I was happy Um, Mm. but basically there's three rules first it has to be two women in the scene uh, talking to each other and the third rule is that they have to be talking about something other than a man. And the scene where Carol Danvers and Maria Rambo are talking about Carol being gone and she's all like, oh, yeah, I mean, all that stuff. And Maria's like, no, the hard part was like grieving for my friend who I thought was dead. And then they're talking about kind of where they are now and where their friendship is going to go from here. And there was not a single mention of a man at any point in that scene. It was just the two of them working through uh, like working through kind of how they were going to pick up now with her being alive and her remembering her friend and oh my god like mm-hmm. all of that so in fact that scene uh passed the Bechdel test mm-hmm. well and i think the movie in general in the spirit of such things does a really great job with, because although it looks like she got all this training from this dude turns out no not so much i saw a really great meme about how carol danvers was a hero before she ever got powers that's right. Like being the flight at her and Maria talking about what it was like back then and women couldn't fly combat missions and what they did because of what they loved to do and wanted to serve. And it's like, and that's just history, right? And and laying that out without being all, you know, high and mighty about it was fantastically done. Yeah, and didn't didn't Carol and Marvell aka dr lady didn't they also have like a scene where they they had a full conversation and a man didn't come up so i wanted to check that scene too i think you might be correct however i haven't seen the movie a second time to confirm Mm -hmm. i just know for a fact that that scene did because like as the scene started i went oh my god i might get a bechdel test like i might get a scene (laughs) I had a feeling it was just like when I was watching Black Panther and there was the scene where the general was talking to what's her face and the names are just escaping me right now. I'm a really <laughs> terrible, terrible Marvel fan right now. 
Uh, but they were talking and it was just like, but it's for Wakanda and la da 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 and you're the general and blah, 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 blah. And then they bring up. Right. Then they bring him up and you're like, mm-hmm. damn it, you got like so far <laughs> in. And then the last two seconds, you're like, and just kidding. <laughs> um, so that really surprised me that we didn't get one um, in Black Panther because it was so close. Um, mm-hmm. It is so close. But uh but yeah, no, this was, I think there may have actually been other ones as well, because I also think there was a scene with Monica and, uh, I'm sorry, Lieutenant Trouble and Lieutenant Captain Trouble, Marvel, yes. Um is that I think I may have that. passed it as well. So mm-hmm. there's definitely a few in there, which is, again, I hope we're getting to a point where that can just happen naturally in fucking movies and we don't have to like, <laughs> uh, like idolize it, yeah, you know, be because it's just mm-hmm. a thing that happens, but um, I think those were great choices. Marvel being a woman, uh, the friend uh, Maria as a character, I really enjoyed. I felt like mm-hmm. I felt like she was a fully three dimensional, developed sidekick character, and those are good and important, and that makes me happy. Oh, she killed the shit out of that Cree. Oh, that dude, was, she murdered that bro. That, oh my that god, was trying, that was trying to shoot him down. <laughs> she was just like, nope. Yeah, I also. Yay. I also like when that moment where you're like, I'm like, no, she's just gonna fucking shoot him. He's like, no, let's do this without powers. I'm like, no, she's gonna shoot. Oh yeah, no, she shot him. And Mm. then she she Mm. was like, I don't have to prove anything to you. I was like, yay, yay. (laughs) Yeah, and it's like the career. Like we did stuff to you. We gave you stuff. Like fucking assholes. All you did was like take shit away. Take me away from my home and and also put this on me. So hold on. Let me I take that, that off. My favorite, my favorite scene, that whole like bad guy, just him trying to disarm her with that macho bullshit of like one on one, take it now, and she's yeah. Like, yeah. no. And I was, and it kind of was drawn out. They kind of really did let him keep going and keep, a little she's bit, let him go. And I'm just shaking my head. I'm sitting there, literally shaking my head in the theater, just waiting for her to go. Because yeah, yeah. We're not buying that shit. It's just not happening. <laughs> it was interesting to see Ronan before he was important or self-important, I should say. Yeah. Like he was still yeah. just like low on the, he was a leader, but still low on the totem pole compared to being fanatical ruler of all things like over religious zealot, you know? Uh, but I also like how they're like, oh, let's send stuff after her. Let's send these tiny little crafts because she didn't just stop eight warheads just now. So let's just do it. <laughs> Like that's a and he's like all shocked that like she takes them out. I'm like, really? You just watched her like single handedly uh, stop all of your warheads, and you're surprised that she killed your stupid little shitty craft. And then I, I love I love the hand to fist. And it's just like boom. Like oh, she does that flex, just, right? Oh god, it's so good. It's so good. It's such a flex. Like you best back the fuck off. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Leave. So what about um the suit? Okay. You guys remember when when the when the first pictures came out for this movie, I was freaking out. Remember, because I'm like, "What is this green and black bullshit? What the fuck is this? Like, right. this is I garbage. This is not it. okay." Yeah. Oh, oh, and then people were like, "No, no, no! It's gonna be okay. They can't possibly do that. They didn't do me wrong. Um, it was so good. And what's even better is we got some really awkward, like arcade, fucking crazy ass shit beforehand." Okay. Uh, which was cool. Also, it's a reminder of just how advanced Cree technology is. That that is the mm-hmm. suit that she has in '95, uh, compared to like where we are now with where Iron yeah. Man is. <laughs> and this chick mm-hmm. has like a suit that can just like nano yeah. redesign itself in a second. But no, the moment that that suit popped up in the right color, I had the big old giant alligator tear, just like the one. Oh, it was it reminded me of Wonder Woman hitting the battle the first time in her full gear. I had the same yeah. moment and it made me so happy and anytime I can have a strong female character who's a fucking badass but not over sexualized but yet still like sexy because she she is but like oh so good. And so, now I yes. want to do a Captain Marvel cosplay. Yeah I know totally. I have the blonde hair for it. Yeah you should totally <laughs> yes, do a do. Captain Marvel cosplay. I incur- I incur- I'll I'm going to crochet that one too. No. <laughs> yes, she wants to do a full on you want no like full I need, on. I need- I need warbler and I need like body suit, like mesh, not mesh, awesome. but yes. that kind of stuff. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> so the goose meme, I take it, that's the one where people are putting their own cats in that I've seen, which I love. Uh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of goose stuff out there, but yes, mostly um, cats. So somebody enjoy. needs to make like a tool for that. 
Because, like, last <laughs> I saw is on Twitter earlier, people were photoshopping their own cat into the poster. Somebody yeah. just makes a tool so I can slap my cat in there. Please let me know. <laughs> Send me that link immediately. <laughs> um, okay. Why didn't Fury call her sooner? Okay. So this came up because everybody I, – I, I did have that moment, too, where I'm like, you know, maybe, like, during that Ultron shit or, like, the Battle New York <laughs> shit. And then I'm like, okay, well, wait a minute. Number one, there is a possibility that he did call her. We don't know. Mm -hmm. We don't know. Maybe he did. Maybe he did and she was like out of signal because she was like dealing with some shit. Who knows? We don't exactly know what she's been dealing with with the scrolls trying to find them a home world and all that. So we don't know. The other part is, is that if he didn't, it makes sense from a standpoint of like the kind of restraint that Nick Fury has. I mean, think about people that he's hung out to dry for like a couple decades and it's like, nah, dog, I wasn't going to let you completely go. You're fine. Um, yeah, it's kind of I, a Nick I, Fury restraint thing, I think, too. I think it was restraint. I mean, because he had spent time ever since then. I mean, that's when they show it in the movie. He <laughs> starts the Avenger initiative based on, you know, her plane name, which is mm-hmm. another spoiler. Yeah. Um, and I love and I think he was he had been doing a really good job gathering heroes and figured mm-hmm. we got this. It took Thanos. It took no one. At least half of those people were fucking gone. Right. And this is a universal thing. Because yeah. I think in his head, like, she's an alien, right? Like, not a lot of our heroes are aliens. I mean, like, the, the Asgardians are. Ish. Yeah. Right? I mean, technically, she's not an alien either. She's got half alien blood. Well, she yeah, she got she yeah. got Phil Coulson. And... Mm-hmm. It was she a magical place. She went to Tahiti. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah, a magical yeah. place. Yeah. Um, she got Phil Coulson. She but got I pumped with some creep I, blood. I, I think it reeks of the restraint. And that yeah. it was the Thor, like, because he already knew this, or not Thor, Thanos. He knew the stakes with Thanos. And once he saw people start disappearing, it was like, whoa, okay, I have to push this button. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's. Pager, magic pager. I dig it. I, um. Mm-hmm. 1995, this. Mm-hmm. Oh man! State of state of the art. <laughs> right. The two way painter. So, folks, I do like. <laughs> I do hold on. I do have to comment on the oh, one so other part that cracked me up. After was, scenes. Oh, we didn't touch on those. Oh, before we get there though, the part where yeah. they're in the room and Nick Fury does all this fancy ass shit, and they get to the next door and she just pops it open. And he's like, "So you could have done that the whole time." She's like, "Yeah, yeah." But I just I wanted to let you. I didn't want to steal your thunder. <laughs> yeah, like no, it's cool. Um, you let me play with tape. The personality is so great. <laughs> right? I love, love, love this character. I like her because she ass. has, she's a smart ass. She has a little bit of like uh, uh, bravado, a little too much bravado, maybe a little overconfident, but that's okay. Like we need more characters like that, that are female. Like it's okay to be a little bit flawed in your hero, in your heroism. Like, that's what male characters, that's what yes. makes character, male characters so good is that they have a little bit of that because they're not pr- trying to prove themselves completely, you know? It's, um, I don't know, she's she's three-dimensional and that makes me happy. Yeah, this very, like, heartening, like, I got this. Yeah, I know I got this. I can do this. Like, that kind oh, of Oh, when she gets up. Uh, oh, my God. Every time she gets up, every time, you're just like, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Keep getting up. Uh, that's what a hero the, does. All the feels. Um, so I feel like so, Black Widow's yeah. like, who's this bitch? <laughs> I was told to not bother saying for the second after credit scene because it wasn't worth it. It was and, cute. No, yes, I was like, oh, you don't. Yes, it was worth it. <laughs> yeah. You're a cat lover, but yeah, the first one we we basically that's where we got our Avengers trailer. Mm-hmm. Like we got the absolute confirmation that she fucking shows up in the Avengers movie. Yep, yep, because. Yep. Uh, I do think it's funny because it's just like, well, who's on the other end of it? Well, let's figure it out. Well, I don't know. It's off now. Oh, who's this bitch? Hi. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> where's Nick? Fuck? He's like, who no, the hell are you? And says, that's another thing that she I says, think she where's shows Fury? Dis- Yeah, where's Fury? Fury. <laughs> it's Fury. She says, where's Fury? Because <laughs> yeah. he made the point. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I um, did laugh about that, too. Which was too. <laughs> also clever. Mm-hmm. I love that word play in there. Um, but I think that's another thing that shows that we're probably right that it was restraint. Because he yeah. would have told one of them mm-hmm. that if she he tried to call her before. He told her. Right. Yeah. yeah. Give, to give him a heads up. Hey, don't blow her out of the sky when she shows up. 
Just I, <laughs> I, I, I've been trying to figure out how we win because we don't have the X Men. Because like in the comics, that's how you beat Thanos. Is you got all these other fucking powerful motherfuckers. Uh, we don't have them. But then I'm like, I, oh cool, we have a stupidly overpowered yeah. Captain Marvel. Awesome. I think it's because yeah. she's got she, she because they've made power the, her that power comes from the space stone. Yeah, because she has a power that came from the space stone, and I think I think they're going to make some sort of rebuilt vision because Shuri yeah. during the big fight in Endgame like saved his consciousness somehow. That was the backup. Yeah. Yeah. Careful. I haven't seen a lot of trailers, so. And if you look at. Uh, th- this is all from in not game. get They're removed. From... Yeah. Oh, in it's Infinity um, War. In yeah, fan yeah. theory, it's all Infinity War. There yeah. are things they can do with time and now space, mm-hmm. depending on who would be where if they're not actually. Well, Doctor done, Strange so. said there's one. There's one way. So mm-hmm. we'll, we'll we'll find so, it. And it involved him theory... obviously going to where the hell. Yeah, my they are. my theory is yeah. that the one way <laughs> is to let Thanos think he won. Yep. And mm-hmm. then come in and kick his ass and undo it. I just don't know why they didn't just call Deadpool. He has, like, one more charge thanks to to Cable. Come on. Oh. (laughs) Oh, my bad. My bad. (laughs) So anyway, folks out there, please let us know your fan theories. We'd love to hear them. Bitch at us for spoiling everything because you couldn't listen to a warning. Chime in by emailing us today at (laughs) geekbrills at gmail.com or give us a ring at 508 474 Five five seven seven. You can also tweet us at Geek Grills. So, girls, what are you most anticipating coming up right now? Well, uh, for me, uh, Glitter Dice is recording on Sunday, and we're doing a drinking episode because we're recording on St. Patrick's Day. Woo! Even though it's going to come out on April first. So, is it actually going to come out on April first, or is this just like a pre-April Fool's joke? I don't know. I'm not in charge of it coming out, but it usually comes out on the first of the month. So who knows? Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna have some alcohol and ramble because that's what happens on our drinking episodes. Is we're just like and like off on ten eight ten different tangents all at once. Kind of like us talking about a movie that we're all super excited about. <laughs> right? <laughs> How about you, Jen? Uh, so I am doing an Undertale stream this weekend, so 11 o'clock uh, Pacific time uh, on my channel. I will have Curly as a guest star as we do another uh, visual novel game. I'm going to be earning, hopefully, some funds, do some fundraising, one, so I can make my car payment, and two, so I can make it to Vegas. So uh, my channel, The Gen Plays, is where that'll be happening on Saturday, and I'm very much looking forward to it. Woohoo! Um, I'm looking forward to. I have a corned beef curing. Mm. I make my own homemade. Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> so that will be our St. Patty's Day thing, and I think I'm going to make some pierogies for a St. Patty's Day's pot that luck at the brewery. And here um, comes my cat. Hi. And Just climbing up. <laughs> I cat. I'm Goose too. Cat. Captain Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> oh my um, I'm God. looking forward to recording Trust Your Cape again. If you've been trying to keep an eye on that, folks, that is my live action superhero role playing game podcast with the folks from uh, Gal Walks Into a Comic Shop. I just got word the other day, and Gal Walks Into a Comic Shop is going on a hiatus to kind of jumpstart and spend that time producing Trust Your Cape. So that'll be really getting going soon. Mm-hmm. Now, folks, you can always come and watch us record live at Twitch. TV slash Geek Grills on Tuesday evenings. Our next one will be on March 19th. Uh, Also, uh, we are supported not only by those of you that support us here on Twitch through subs and bits, which we love so very much. We also have amazing patrons who are the greatest girlfriends on the internet, and you can actually become a patron today. Patreon.com slash grills. And don't forget, if you have an Amazon Prime, uh, if you have that, you get one free sub a month. So you can do that every month and give us uh, their money. Um, and it doesn't cost you anything because you already have Prime. So you should do that. Yep. Also, leaving us a review is free. Um, they help our ranking on uh, the podcast catchers, whichever you use. Um, they can help you, other people find our podcast. And, excuse you, cat. Um, <laughs> you can also join our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and help us spread the word there. She had to give me a goodbye headbutt. Before yeah. she left the back of my chair. Uh, this cat is, like, for audio listeners, <laughs> Linda is currently animals. being caressed by her cat via shoulder. 
<laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Oh, Linda. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. I, she loves me. <laughs> so where can we find you, Grills on the Interwebs? Um, let's see. For me, you can also listen to me talk about women in gaming on the Glitter Dice podcast, which, as I said, comes out on every month. And you can find me uh, here on Twitch under the name True Noob. That's T-R-U-N-0-0-B. And I'll be uh, continuing my crochet, my cosplay. I'm working on Pink Diamond. So I'm doing Woo-hoo. here. <laughs> I can be reached at nine of twelve on Twitter and Twitch, <gasps> and on the Heresy and Hearsay and Trust Your Cape shows. I just realized you said you're doing Pink Diamond. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited. How do we talk about this? <laughs> and I forgot. Okay, sorry. Side note. Sorry. <laughs> I'm at the Gen Says on Twitter, streaming on Twitch at Twitch.tv/slash The Gen Plays, and I you can find everything I do at thegensays.com because I own the shit out of that domain. Also, I have ADD. Yay. Yay! <laughs> Thanks for listening, everyone. Good game. Good game. Good game. GG. GG. <laughs> all of those, okay. All of the demons Let's... for all of the. Oh fans. yeah, we got this diamond yes. oh, yeah. to the kids. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I've got this puppy back here who is farting up a goddamn storm right now, dude. Anduin, you are a fucking stinky asshole right now. What are you doing? <laughs> Okay, so let's at some point he title. was absolutely chewing on something mm-hmm. he wasn't supposed to be chewing on. And I'm like trying to throw things at him, and then I'm like, no, if I throw that at him, he will chew on that too, and then that will be worse. So I was like trying mm-hmm. to find things on my desk that I was comfortable with him trying to chew on to get him to stop chewing on whatever he was chewing on, <laughs> like the corner of my guys. table right now. Apparently, like a show Christ. title. Yes. Uh, um, uh, hot potato tesseract. <laughs> Nick Fury won't ask for directions. I'm kind There's of proud alcohol of that one. involved everywhere. <laughs> the marvelous Ms. Marvel, the marvelous Captain Marvel, and mm. Lieutenant Bechtel Trouble. <laughs> I do like that one, but I also really like Hot Potato Tesseract. I love yes. Hot Potato Tesseract. I feel like that's the right answer. People should vote, though. People should vote. Where's the Where's vote. the thingy? Um, Showbot. Don't ask. Da. Put it up again. Okay. Yeah. Um, um. Yeah, I like that I one. I want to say something about the Nick Fury won't ask for directions. I have to say, my husband did the coolest thing. He last night after D and D, we were standing around chatting, and he actually said it unlo- aloud some kind of thing. What was it? Um. So our friend, the DM, is there with his and his girlfriend's there, and his ex girlfriend's there, and they are getting along famously. And he's like, "Is this supposed to happen?" They're like ganging up on me. And then we got into age differences and I was way older than everybody. And then there was like the new girlfriend's older than him. And so the ex-girlfriend's like, well, that's okay. Men time tend to die before we do. And my husband pipes up. He's like, well, yeah, it's because we can't read manuals. We never <laughs> fucking ask for directions. Like, <laughs> And all the women look at him like, wow, yeah. <laughs> you you understand <laughs> dude BioCow is just getting destroyed by Nightbot right now Nightbot is just like no <laughs> okay because we need to like mod him I was gonna say and... I think we should just mod him at this point because I can yeah. permit him all the time but <laughs> I thought he was but alright no he's I permit him for now though it says he's banned in this channel that's because I'm trying to... He's been timed out for 600 seconds, so I just permitted him. And then... Oh, God. I don't know. All you had to do was slash mod. You... Well, I permitted him because I thought he was You're trying fun. to do something, and then I realized he got a thing. Oh, my God. I don't have permission to do that because I'm not important enough. I'll, I'll fix it. Hold on. Um, <laughs> by the way, I promised Curly that we would raid him. Okay. Because he let me plug our shit on his shit yesterday. <laughs> um, plus, he finished oh, Mario RPG yesterday. We have to wait till the timeout to run out. To That's unmet. so dumb. Nightbot, why it are you being dumb. so dumb? I'm sorry, BioCow. We love you. We do love God you. God damn it. All right. Let's, so what do we want to say to him? There's alcohol involved in everything. Ten he's, minutes. It's Lent right now. So he's currently Lenting. So he's not drinking right now. But I still think we should make the alcohol comment. I mean... Yeah, the other one is the you know, hot potato tesseract, but. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Hot potato tesseract is a fantastic raid message. 
Okay. This is just, it's just like, I was thinking about it. I can't even it, I spell like, it. Hot potato. Te- I will. Thank you. It's just, I was just like, I guess it's because the Tesseract is the space stone. It can just kind of go anywhere it wants. So it's just kind of like, it's, it's, I forget. There's a story about like a book that if it's, if it's found by somebody for too long, it'll lose it. It'll get lost. I think it's in D and D. So it's oh. like the Tesseract is just, Wherever it wants to be. I support this. Okay, we're going to raid. Uh, hang out with us next week. Uh, we're going to do cool shit. shit. It's going to be cool. Um, oh, it'll be awesome. And BioCal, I will mod you. when BioCal, we love you. Whoops. Shit. No, I mm-hmm. did it. I did it, right? Is it going? I don't know. Are you allowed going. to do it? I'm still yeah, trying to copy shit. I, I think okay. it's still going. I think it's allowing it. I don't see it. I don't see it, though. But Is it, it drunk says, kids gaming? Yeah, it says unraid if you don't want to raid, so that must be right. Oh, yep, we're going. Here we go. It's Yay, going. There it's we going. go. It's loading. Because I had to do it, sweetie. <laughs> it's funny because it said to unraid do this, so it was literally going to do it. That's weird. All right, kids. Let us all raid the shit. Bye, guys. Bye bye. Uh, bye bye. Okay, love you. Bye. <laughs>